Okay, we're back to Cube, and we've run two scenarios. We've run this base 2010 and a road diet 2010, which was the child of 2010, and all we did was change the lane field on Main Street. So, one thing I want to show you, I came over here in preparation for this video and looked at, oh, I guess, highway summary, which was where the final network is. I clicked on it, and it says base 2010, which surprised me because... I'm in the road diet scenario. Usually if you switch between these, the file names will change. Not always, but sometimes if the scenario um, would have a different file name, usually. And so it's not this, or it is the same. I wondered why. So I went here, and this is why. So um, I correctly used the lane underscore diet field. That's what I needed to get the scenario right but this unloaded net prefix was not labeled correctly so I probably should have called that diet 2010 something like that so now I've done that and close it but I'm not going to rerun right now I just want it to be ready for later um, more right now though I am just simply interested in oh, what I got Oh, look at that. Now it's already calling it Diet 2010. And when I click, double click that, it says File Does Not Exist. So I guess I can't do it like that yet. I have to set it back to um, uh, Base 2010. And that way I can look at the output. So, come down here to main, and uh, hmm, it's not quite as bad as I expected it to be. Um, this was the section right here where we did a road diet. You'd probably be able to tell by clicking on this lanes pre-definition. Oh yeah, all the way up. And you can see there that on this scenario um, that Main Street goes down to one lane each direction through this section and we go back to the uh, PMVC ratio and you can see that it's pretty congested and the roads next to it are pretty congested but it's kinda short-lived and it's not necessarily a total disaster because they're not all solid purple um, so let's see what we, let's see what we can map here. So on this um, this one, we can do model versus observed. Oh, we gotta get that fixed sometime. It's never really quite there. So we look at daily volume if we can find that. evolve two ways so that sums the both sides of the road together and then I'm gonna go find my count because that's one thing I know about right can't find it there it is count 2011 and that AWDT field I think I removed it for this one so there we go. Alright, so the current count is 35,000. Um, this says main drops to 28,000 roughly. Um, you can see that the parallel roads have all gone up by a substantial amount. Um, well, I guess we don't know if they've gone up by a substantial amount because we're not comparing them against the model, we're comparing them against the actual count. Um, and so there is a difference there, but one problem is, is that I can't compare it against an actual model because the I don't have another scenario's results on this network. I've only got one scenario's results on this network. So why don't we fix that? There's a fun little thing that I want to show you. Um, be back in a second. Okay, so I've gone to the directory where this cache model is and I have a 
script that works outside of the normal cube process. It's just a Voyager engine script, and uh, we'll use that one. Um, but we need to go find the networks to compare. So these directories match the directories that were on the, the tree in the cube window. So RTP runs base 2010 and inside base 2010 is road diet but also inside base 2010 are these other files um, and I think we're going to want this base 2010 final with observed network so I'm, I just hit control C on that and I'm going to go back to cache model put that into this compare no not compare my you can look at that later that's the comparisons I made for the couplet study that I did and then I'm going to go back down into that deep dark dungeon that was way down there no it's not under model scripts I gotta pay attention it's under RTP runs that 2010 road diet highway assignment and this one's also called base 2010 which is going to cause a problem when I put it over there because the other one has the same name so I'm going to call this one diet 2010 just like that and I'll probably give you guys these files here so that you don't have to um, go deep down in there and find them. So back to here, compare. Okay. Alright, so now I have two networks in here that I can compare. I just need to open the name. I'm going to open this. I like to use Ultra Edit sometimes, but uh, try to use one that you guys have access to. Um, WordPad, I like WordPad better than Notepad. Oh, hi, An Ho. Uh, my buddy from Vietnam is always contacting me. I, he helps me build cool web pages. Okay, so what this is is it's just an ASCII file um, that has um, Voyager program commands in it. So the um, run PGM highway net is the same as one of the steps in the main um, cube window that we were looking at. These are also additional steps um, that are required to do this comparison. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our road diet name there. We're going to put um, base name there. Base this says it works bet if best if net1 is the higher capacity network, so that would be base network. And we're going to call this compared base 10 diet 10 so that we know what it was that we compared. Now let's just look at this thing to see how it works. So it's reading in. This is an alias. Um, up here I defined that name. You can just type these. You don't there's nothing magic about them. You can type them out if you know the syntax. And so the, the base 2010 name goes in here. A temporary network is going to get written out and it will include these fields in it. Um, and same over here. It'll include those fields. Then I write in my temporary A and B. Um, and then I write out an a compared network. In my compared network I'm going to include these various um, attributes that I defined and then down in here is where I define the attributes that I want. So this is the syntax um, for the read it in file so li.1.ft means link input from file number one um, and 
functional type. And I'm just going to label that FT1 and link input from file 2, I label that FT2. Then I subtract and I get FT1 minus 2. So then when I map that, then it'll show me all places where the functional type from one network is not the same as the functional type from the other network. And uh, same here with lanes, VC ratios, speeds, basically any of the fields that you have av available or that you defined in, in your model, you can work with them and compute here. So daily traffic one, daily volume one, daily volume two, Okay, so we've got all that. So I'm going to hit save and close. And now I'm going to just oh no nope, um, run. I want to open with not WordPad anymore, but Voyager. And okay, this is a little different than the cube window. We ran Voyager from within the cube window, and it runs many of these .s files in sequence. Here it's just running one single .s file. So I'm going to do that and that was that. It took one second to run that whole thing. The regular model takes five, well ten minutes in this one. But even on the Wasatch Front Network it's really fast. So now we've got this diet final, or no not that one, the compared one. and this and this VPR file has the color settings in it. Okay, so now let's zoom in and find out what it is that we're mapping. So we're mapping PM volume 1 minus 2. So PM V Oh, and it must be in two in hundreds or something like that. I didn't notice that, but I must have divided by a hundred because otherwise that doesn't make any sense. That would be different by two cars. Okay, here's um, this is the same thing for daily. I'm pretty sure that the daily is dividing by a thousand. I think I remember seeing that in the file. So um, basically this blue color means that if it's less than 1,000 but greater than negative 1,000 then there really isn't any change that we can discern and so color it blue. Um, but uh, um, this is red, let's see why. I'm going to go post daily volume difference greater than 1,000 so my net one was my um, higher capacity network, and that's what's getting posted, I think, right? Daily volume one. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the reason I uh, red green usually red means the volume went up in the comparison network. This time it went down. So if I wanted it to go be the other color, I just have to swap the two networks as they're red in and compared. Um, but anyway, what you can see here is that the model had in it 41,000. The road diet dropped it to 29, so it's a difference of 12,000. So that 12,000 is what we would apply to the base year if we were doing base year error correction and say whatever the base year count was, this road diet makes 12,000 cars go away. That's kind of how I would do that. Um, and you can also see that it increased these parallel roads. This one went up by 4,000, this one went up by 3, this one by 2. Even far away, I've got uh, um, other roads that went up by 2,000 because a lot of people are attempting to compensate for the fact that they can't get through Main Street very well at all. Um, now, let's look at some other things in here. The PMVC ratio. 
that is weird. So the, the, the congestion ratio is barely any worse. 1.02 versus 0.98. So that I'm a little surprised about. Um, this says the PM speed dropped um, by about 7 miles an hour which is pretty substantial. Um, that's enough to make people divert. Um, we don't actually know in truth though how realistic that is because nobody has ever tried to compare that with Synchro. Um, so you'll be using Synchro soon and Synchro will give you a more accurate actual travel times and if anyone ever cared to improve travel demand models um, you not should, they spend billions of dollars on their roads. Um, then they would come back in here and compare what Synchro has to say about the speed changes to what the model has to say about the speed changes. So, anyway, um, so that's some of the comparisons. We can also compare lanes. So, this lane comparison, we go out and see the whole region. And that's one way to confirm that the scenario you designed is correctly designed, is you compare it to something very close to it and see if the changes that are in it are the changes that you thought were in it. Um, and as long as they are, then you did your scenario correctly. We can look at change in functional type. Oh, it didn't do it. Uh, those things aren't set up. I'd have to probably set up the colors for that. Um, see it's some old definition that doesn't exist anymore. And uh, oh well, I don't see a functional type definition set up. So anyway, that's fun. So I think that's it. Maybe that's it for this cube assignment. Don't know that there's anything to turn in, but uh, I'll ask you um, What's my favorite flavor of Trident gum? Um, and it's not the same as what I gave you in class, whoever the winner was. So if you can answer cinnamon to um, that question, then I'll know that you're watching the videos through to the end, and, and then you're good. Um, I do hope you played with Cube while you did this. Um, I'm not sure I'd need you to turn in anything. Maybe turn in the comparison network. Um, that would be a good thing to turn in. So, all right. Thanks.